This is my overseas retirement for beginners report. In this report, I cover why some countries are better for new overseas Western retirees than other countries because they are more westernized. If you've not yet spent at least six months living overseas, you may want to start with one of the countries that's easier for beginners. At first, that may sound like a backhanded insult, like beginners are less capable or something like that. But the truth is, I almost didn't make it through my first six months. My first country living overseas was India. India is just not the easiest place to adjust to during your first six months living overseas. But if you can get past six months in India, you'll, you'll love India and your life will be forever richer because you live there. But I'm not promoting India for your first retirement country. Here's what I am saying. If you've never lived outside your home country for at least six months, you have to think about this. Picking the right first country will increase the likelihood that your life overseas will be successful because you won't be so overwhelmed. But once you get your overseas legs under you, it will be much easier for you to try more challenging countries. In fact, once you are more experienced, some of the countries I'll recommend for beginners below might just feel too westernized and you won't want to stay long term once you have been to other more culturally rich countries. After almost 15 years living overseas in 67 different countries, I can safely say that once you have your overseas legs firmly under you, you may never want to go home. The world is an amazing place. In a moment, I'll explain how to identify a country that's suitable for beginners. But first, I want to destroy a false belief that most people th think uh, when they're thinking about retiring overseas, they have it stuck in their head for some reason. Your first love will not be your last love. I need to destroy this false belief. When it comes to overseas retirement, you're likely to cheat on your first overseas country and fall in love with many other countries during retirement. Get the idea out of your head that you're looking for the Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Uh, Perfect right country. Think of yourself more as someone that is separating from their old country and wants to date around for a few years before trying the, tying the knot with a new country. Is permanent everlasting love at first sight possible with a new country? Yes, but it's not likely. If you're newly divorcing your old country after 50 years, would you want to just marry the first country you jump in bed with? Or would you want to explore the mysteries of life with a few other exotic, possibly even stray countries before you settle down again? I'm advising you to date around before settling down. You know, you, you'll know you pick the right place when you have compared it to others with your feet on the ground. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks when you have found your heaven. See yourself more like a Viking or Columbus. You're sailing off into the ocean blue and you're going to stop off at several ports along the way. You're going to explore your new life of adventure before, you're, before you anchor yourself somewhere permanently. Don't drop anchor at the first port. So if you're sitting on your couch watching YouTube videos trying to pick your favorite country without your feet on the ground, you need to stop that. It's time to go eat the fruits of multiple countries before picking your favorite and then tying the knot. I know what you might be thinking, Dan, what does it cost to go to visit multiple countries for a few months each before picking uh, your favorite retirement destination? I covered this question in my report called Our Travel Expenses for 2020. In 2020, Chung and I visited four countries in 12 months and we discussed our expenses for the year Link provided. I know what else you're thinking. My perfect place isn't even open yet. I suggest you explore a few others before it opens so you'll know how it compares to others once it finally does. We have retired cheap reports for over 80 destinations all over the world. We also have other resources that teach you how to slow travel the world for months or years at a time with very little money. One such, uh, one such resource teaches about the slow travel world highway link provided. You may just love slow travel and decide to keep doing it like we have. We also have a process to help you get ready to leave your home country. 
and a free ebook explaining how I was able to fire my boss and travel the world for 14 years, link provided. The truth is, the world is a very dynamic place. Things are likely to change many times over the next 20 to 30 years. You're likely to pull up anchor eventually and enjoy a few great countries during your golden years. If you visit a few others before you pick your present favorite, you'll have a head start on where to go should you ever have to pull up anchor and sail to another port in the future. From where we sit now, we cannot see the future clearly. Start to see the whole world as your playground instead of just looking for true love with one final country. That takes us back to the original reason for this report. What are the best countries for overseas retirement for beginners? Since you're gonna see a few, why not start in one that's a little easier? The first port of your adventure is important because it'll give you time to adjust to your new life of foreign adventure. This first stop should not cause sensory overload. So which of your top five favorites should you visit first? How do you answer that question? Okay, best overseas countries for beginners. I'll give you examples of countries that are easier for overseas beginners. But as I do that, I'll also talk about why some countries are better for beginners. This will help you order your top five accordingly. I'm just gonna use Southeast Asia and Latin America in this example, but you'll get the idea and know how to apply these ideas should you be looking in other areas like Eastern Europe or South America, which I also love. Okay, comfort food. When people first uh, are living outside their home country, finding comfort food could be one of the most challenging things. Fast, friendly, familiar, and often even cheap food is available in most Western countries. When people are hungry in their home country, they often just look up as they're driving down the street and see signs for familiar foods. There are chain restaurants in many parts of the world now, and people know exactly what they can get and what it will cost as soon as they see the sign. They just pull over and grab something to eat with very little thought. But what do you do if you end up in a place that has no familiar signs? Have you ever noticed that when you are hungry, you don't think as well? Do you get impatient and feel stressed? You need to avoid as much as possible when you first leave your home country so you don't get disoriented. Many countries around the world have a proliferation of comfort foods from around the world. So you can quickly find things to eat when you're hungry. Once you have been in a country for more than about six months, you'll notice that you eat at these fast, fast food places less often. That is because by the sixth month, you'll know something healthy and cheap you can eat. You'll even begin to see these Western foods as unhealthy once you know what to eat. But in the first few weeks and months, these comfort foods may help you get over the learning curve. Once you know of a cheap, healthier, local alternative food, you'll become less interested. As an American, what are some of the home foods I see outside the USA? Uh, they are places like McDonald's, Domino's Pizza, KFC, Subway, and Burger King. I'm only going to mention Southeast Asia and Latin America, but others listening to this are invited to share countries where they see uh, other, their comfort, comfort foods below. I'm not saying these don't exist in other countries. I'm just giving examples of two parts of the world. In Southeast Asia, you'll see these foods in Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines. In Latin America, you'll see these foods in Costa Rica, Mexico in the tourist areas, and Panama in the tourist areas, and even some of the non-tourist areas. But when we see these brands in other countries, in those two parts of the world, Southeast Asia and Latin America, it just doesn't seem to be as often. Language. If you get to your first new country and you're able to order food and get whatever information you need when you speak English to the locals, you'll feel less stressed and have more fun. You'll, you'll adjust more quickly to the quirkiness of whatever country you're getting to know. Now that doesn't limit you to only English speaking countries. It just means that you should pick areas of countries for your first visit where there are people in each business that understand what you need and how to help you. Yes, if you later decide to retire there, you should learn the basics of the local language to help you adjust. But since you are in the exploratory process and haven't picked where to live yet, you should not go to countries or areas uh, within countries where there are people that don't understand what you're talking about. 
It's okay here and there, but mostly you want to be able to speak what you know. There are many places in the world where many, if not all businesses, have local people that understand enough English to understand what you need. Mostly those are tourist areas. The common language in many tourist areas around the world is English. This is because Europeans often learn English in school. So if locals in tourist areas first learn English, they can often get the higher paying jobs in these foreign towns because they can sell to the Europeans and to Americans and Canadians and Australians and New Zealanders, all of the Western countries that speak English, in addition to countries that don't but had to learn it in school. So if we stay with just Southeast Asia and Latin American examples, people will often understand what you need in the Philippines, Thailand, and Malaysia, and in the tourist areas in countries like Mexico, Costa Rica, and Panama. Once you've been there a few months, you'll pick up on some local language and you'll learn how to use Google Translate and other tricks to get what you want when you're outside the tourist areas. So your first country is just a place where you get the most help when you're cutting your teeth on foreign life. Accommodations. When you first leave your home country, you might be surprised by how little automation there is around the world. It wasn't until I was 47 years old that I first lived in an apartment or home that did not have a dishwasher. Now I almost never even see dishwashers, no matter where I am in the world. We generally like to find places for about $20 a night when we travel around the world. You will almost never see a dishwasher outside the USA, even if you pay $40 per night. People just do the dishes themselves around most of the world. But you may see a dishwasher in Americanized cultures like Costa Rica. Uh, not always, but sometimes. Chung likes to get places that have clothing washing machines. She doesn't like to send laundry out to the cleaners because something goes missing from time to time. But we almost never see clothing dryers around the world. In most of the world, people dry their clothes outside on clotheslines. When you first leave your home country, you will just feel more comfortable having a nice place to live. Nice means whatever you are used to having in your home country. But as time passes, you'll learn how to live comfortably in many different kinds of accommodations. But in those first six months, spend a little more for accommodations that seem more like home. On web services like Airbnb, they even list what amenities each condo or apartment has. But after a time, if you're like me, all you'll need is a refrigerator and a gas stove and pots and pans. Everything else is just a bonus if it happens to be there once, you, once you're used to, uh, to life uh, around the world, like dishwashers, microwaves, coffee makers, all that stuff you'll learn how to live without, without any trouble. So if, if you plan on retiring overseas, I suggest the following countries for beginners. If you're thinking of retiring cheap in Central America, I suggest Costa Rica for your first country. Costa Rica is, is one of the most Americanized countries in Latin America. But after you're more experienced and know how to get things done anywhere in the world, you'll be ready for less Americanized countries. If you're like me, Costa Rica may even move closer to the bottom of your favorite places to live in Central America. In Southeast Asia, I suggest Thailand, Malaysia, or the Philippines. There are many English speakers in all three, and, and they have many of the comfort foods you'll crave from home in the tourist areas, like I mentioned. The fast food, for some reason, travels uh, pretty fast around the world. If you live somewhere in the world that you believe is a very easy place for overseas retirement for beginners, please let us know in the notes below. Be interested to hear your thoughts on that. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for Vagabond Buddha. Thanks for watching our video, Overseas Retirement for Beginners. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? Hey, if you live somewhere in the world that's beautiful and cheap and you'd like to come on the channel and be a guest star and tell the public about it, please leave a comment below. Thanks so much. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world. 
and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.